When looking at the right-hand side of Einstein's field equations, mathematicians and physicists see different things from each other. For the mathematician, this constant is just that, a constant. He's not interested in the fact that it involves two of the most fundamental quantities in nature. In other words, the gravitational constant g and the speed of light c. So the mathematician sees it as nothing but a scaling factor that might as well be called kappa, for example. This tensor, t mu nu, is described as a rank 2 symmetric object, two indices, defined on a differentiable manifold. It is defined pointwise. Its components vary smoothly with the coordinates. And it is covariant under coordinate transformation. It doesn't depend on the local coordinate choice. It is an intrinsic geometric object. The mathematician would also describe this tensor as a bilinear mapping, so a function that takes two tangent vectors at a point on the manifold and returns a single real number. This real number, the output of the bilinear map, is not interpreted as energy or momentum, as a physicist would, but instead it's viewed mathematically as encoding a relation between directions on the manifold at that point. The mapping is smooth, and so we can differentiate it and contract it with other tensors. Each one of these operations would produce a different result that directly influences the left-hand side of Einstein's equation. In other words, the geometry and curvature of space-time. Now, the physicist would see the situation from a different perspective. Each component represents something tangible. Energy, momentum, pressure, radiation. It tells you how matter moves, how it pushes and pulls, and how it exchanges energy. This tensor encodes the state of a fluid, a beam of light, an electromagnetic field, or even the vacuum, but always in terms of observables, measurable quantities. That's a very common misconception, that only matter is capable of bending space-time and producing curvature. This tensor tells us a different story. Stress, which is a generalization of pressure including shear and tension. Energy in the form of matter or radiation, and momentum, that is, energy in motion or flow across space. These are all capable of producing space-time curvature. Interestingly, this matrix encodes all this information, and if at any moment you want to extract a piece of data from it, all you gotta do is contract it with the appropriate basis vectors, or tensors, corresponding to the physical quantity you're interested in. If you guys are enjoying this video, do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. One of the most elegant bridges between pure mathematics and physics comes from a result called Noether's Theorem. But Sophia will be the one to tell you guys about it. Noether's theorem tells us that whenever a system has continuous symmetry, there is a conserved quantity. In the context of Einstein's equation, if the laws of physics, and more importantly the geometry itself, remain unchanged when you shift the coordinate system slightly in space or time. That's called translational symmetry. From this symmetry, Noether's theorem gives us conservation of energy and momentum. Which means, for example, that the total energy inside a closed region of space doesn't randomly disappear as you move forward in time, and momentum doesn't magically appear or vanish as you move through space. As a concrete example, imagine a perfect fluid at rest. This is a volume of space that looks exactly the same everywhere and in every direction. There is no motion in space, but there's always motion in time. The energy density, rho, is constant. The pressure, P, is the same in all spatial directions. This uniformity gives us something very powerful, translational symmetry. According to Noether's theorem, the symmetry leads to conservation of energy and momentum. But the story doesn't stop there. Imagine rotating your coordinate system, like spinning your frame of reference. If the geometry and physical laws remain unchanged under such a rotation, that's rotational symmetry. Noether's theorem tells us that the symmetry leads to the conservation of angular momentum. Mathematically, this conservation law emerges when the tensor is symmetric. So t mu nu is equal to t nu mu. t01 is equal to t10, and t02 is equal to t20, and so on. B 
Basically, these triangular regions are the same. These components encode information about shear stress, which tells us how the motion in one direction affects neighboring layers. These components represent momentum density in each direction. Think of it as the amount of push from either matter or radiation contained within a tiny volume of space and in a specific direction. And these give us the energy flux, so in other words, how much energy is moving through space in each direction. Notice that for us to have this kind of symmetry, so rotational symmetry, the momentum density must be equal to the energy flux. It means that the amount of energy that is flowing in the spatial direction must be the same as the amount of momentum stored in that direction over time. This balance is what ensures angular momentum conservation. And lastly, in general relativity, we deal with curved spacetime, which means that we must go beyond flat translations and rotations. Here, the symmetry is much deeper. It's called general covariance. Actually, Einstein originally named his work theory of invariance, referring to this type of symmetry, also known as diffeomorphism invariance. It means that the equations of physics and the geometry itself look the same in any coordinate system you choose. This symmetry doesn't lead to a global conservation law, but to a local one. Mathematically, it tells us that this tensor must satisfy a sort of geometric divergence-free condition, expresses this. Intuitively, it means that energy and momentum are conserved locally, from point to point, even when the manifold is curved. More concretely, imagine a narrow beam of light traveling in the x direction, like a laser. This is a classic example of what's called a null dust. A stream of massless particles, such as photons, all moving together at the speed of light. The tensor for this system stores information about how energy and momentum are distributed and how they flow through spacetime. This is the energy density, present at that point in space. This one is the momentum density, in the x direction. And this is the energy flux. And this right here is the pressure in the x direction. So the amount of force per unit area being exerted on a surface perpendicular to the x-axis. All the other components are zero, since the light beam is not moving along the y or the z directions. And there's no pressure or shear in those directions anyway. If you want to see the detailed calculations, which are not very long, of the local conservation condition in flat space, check out the PDF link in the description. There you will also find a summary of the video. Also, if you want to be the first to know when we release our books and courses, sign up with your email on our website, link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.